If someone told me, I would get an opportunity to document a cave deep in the forest of Sabah, Malaysia. Be meters away from crocodiles, watch millions of bats and birds leave and come back to the cave. I wouldn't believe it. And then it happened. We arrived at Sandakan city. The city is a perfect mixture of nature and the city life. People live a simple lifestyle there. It's a lot different from Kuala Lumpur, the city that I live in. The whole purpose of our visit is to document what bees should go through to harvest these birds' nests and why is this industry multi-million dollars. Sandakan is here. This is Momanton, the world's biggest bee え、その and turns out I'm going to learn and see a lot of new things that are going to open my eyes. The next morning was cloudy and rainy, but we have no choice. We had to push through. If you're a filmmaker, it's your worst nightmare because you have all of your gear and you gotta take care of your gear at the same time, get the shots that are needed. We reached this Kinawatanka River, which is also the second largest river in Malaysia. And the place is so diverse and filled with wildlife. And if you really pay attention and look around, you really see the nature around you. So we got on the boat and off we go to plant the tree. Everything was slimy, muddy. My pants were filled with mud. <laughs> Bag is heavy as well. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> nice. I was trying my best to keep my camera dry, but it was very hard. And the guy on the boat spotted something. We looked over there. I didn't really think much. And then I looked close and there it was. The beautiful, big, majestic crocodile. Getting... Oh, it's moving, it's moving. Uh oh, it's coming here. <laughs> I've never seen a crocodile that close, apart from the zoo, in my life. And it was just an amazing sight to see. At that moment, I really felt like a National Geographic videographer. Because I was documenting it all. The guy told us that some kid was eaten by a crocodile nearby that lake. And I was really freaked out. Because we had to go down the boat and go to the shore to get to this forest to plant the tree and we were just meters away from crocodile. So that was very freaky. And the day was just getting started. After that, we drove to Gomantong Cave and we prepared ourselves to climb. It was still raining and everything was wet. I made a DIY waterproof camera mount for my camera, which is basically putting a plastic on top of my camera to cover from the rain. And we had guides with us that carry our food and water and other essential stuff. And then we started our climb to Gomantong Cave.え、
あの大量のツバメたちを見ることができます。And it was at that moment I regretted not wearing waterproof and hiking shoes. So I had no grip and it was really bad. Damn. After climbing, we reached a point that there are these stairs with no steps on it. So basically, we had to walk on these railings and it was slippery. Mind you, if you slip, it's gonna hurt you a lot. Especially, I'm holding my camera gear. What happened to your face? I don't know. <laughs> So it wasn't an easy climb. So we climbed up and we reached this hut on top of the cave where workers live and sleep after harvesting. I was on the trail and it's then when I saw this beautiful, majestic Gamantong cave. What's so beautiful about this Gamantong cave is that it is shared with thousands of bats and swift led birds, which produce Slyvan S that are highly valued in Chinese community. Which is why it makes the industry so valuable. It's not just the quality of food, but also the process of retrieving and harvesting those nests. And workers do lose their lives retrieving them because they're climbing the ladders made of bamboo and they're hundreds of meters high above in the cave. And they have to risk their life to retrieve those bird nests. When we arrived to the eye of the cave, I looked at my friend and I, and I asked him, What's next? Where do we go? And then he pointed, We go down there. And I was like, How are we gonna go down there? It's so steep. It's like literally really steep. And when I turned around, they were already going there. So I was like, All right. And it was at that moment I wish I had grip on my shoes. All of the mosquitoes, they're going in the dark. There's literally darkness behind me. And everybody is going down there. And it's a different world down there. It's getting dark, it's quiet, it's a different vibe. You're walking through the bird's poo. This soil is made of mixture of bad shit and uh, soil, uh, we call it guano. Uh, it, can, it is uh, a very high valued fertilizer. There are many different kinds of insects. This was the first real raw experience that I experienced. And we saw a lot of bird's nests. And finally, we reached to the point where workers are harvesting the bird's nest. So after we got all of those shots, the best has yet to come because one of the most important shots that we had to capture millions of bats leaving the cave and birds coming in and vice versa. So we got out of the cave before it gets dark. We waited for the bats to leave the cave and swiftlet birds to come back in. And that moment was truly magical. And I have never seen something so beautiful in my whole life. This whole experience for me was absolutely amazing. I've met a lot of cool people, seen a lot of things, explored beautiful bodies of caves. And the best part was those caves were there all to ourselves. Getting wet, slimy, blisters in your foot, muddy, meters away from crocodile, slipping in the mud. Will I do it again? Definitely yes. All right, the place is crawling with cockroaches. <laughs> and with that being said, please do check out Bisu. They sell high quality bird nest product. And thank you, Bisu, for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this amazing adventure. <laughs>